Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful country of Italy here in Europe and I'm visiting one of Italy's most historic towns. I'm visiting Lucca. L-U-C-C-A is the spelling of this absolutely wonderful town here in Tuscany in Italy. In this particular documentary we're going to walk around for two to three hours and we're going to visit the most important and the most historic sites. This is Vic. We have so much to see and so much to learn. Let's go for a walk. Let's do it. And uh, before we enter the old town of Lucca here in Italy, let's look at the uh, beautifully preserved 16th century walls three kilometers in length you can walk on these beautiful walls you can go jogging on a beautiful day and you can have a full view of the old town that is surrounded by these magnificent walls now let's turn around and let's cross one of the gates. We're going to cross the gate of St. Peter in order to enter Lucca. There are several gates around the walls. This is the most popular one since this is the gate closest to the train station here in Lucca. Come on, let's cross this gate and let's go for a nice walk around this incredibly beautiful and historic town here in Italy, Lucca. Let's go. And uh, the very first square that we encounter is the immense square of Napoleon. Now Napoleon's forces occupied Lucca in 1805 and control of Tuscany was given to his sister Elisa. And this square has beautiful buildings from the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, next to Napoleon's square, we find the square of Giglio. With a beautiful building here on one side of the square, this is the neoclassical building of the local theater here in Lucca. This building dates from the end of the 19th century. I am now in the center of Lucca and in front of me you see the 11th century church of Saint Michael with a statue, a bronze statue of Saint Michael on top of the front slaying a dragon. You can also see here the magnificent bell tower also dating from the 11th century and rising up to 70 meters in height. This is a very, very popular place for tourists here in Lucca. We don't have to pay to enter and to view this ancient church. So let's go inside for a very, very quick tour. Come on. Let's go for a very quick walk inside this 11th century church. To the right of the entrance we find Andrea della Robbia's masterpiece, Madonna and Child, right there. Let's turn around and go on down the main nave of the church built in the Romanesque style. It is a very dark church with only very few windows on top as you can see very very characteristic of the churches of that era it includes many priceless pieces of art on the walls on both sides and also it has a spectacular altar as you can see here
beautiful. Let's continue our walk around Luca. It is a little difficult to view it from here, but right there in the middle of the frame you see a very tall tower. This is Torre delle Ore. This is a 13th century tower. This tower was very deeply contested between the powerful families of Luca here during the 13th century and later on. Now you can buy a ticket for five euros and climb to the top for beautiful views of Luca. But you will see this tower listed in every guidebook that you happen to have in your pocket when visiting Luca. And of course, it is a very pleasant experience to walk around the old town. So get a very good map and experience the old town by getting lost and admire the architecture and the neighborhoods. And uh, here's Guinigi Palace. What we're really interested in is the 80 meter high Guinigi Tower right there. 230 steps up and a cool four euro ticket for a wonderful view of the medieval town of Lucca. This tower has a garden of uh, shade trees so if you happen to be up there it's very and it's very very sunny you can rest up there now why do we see so many towers so many tall towers and the reason is during the medieval times the wealthy people in order in order to exercise their power over their neighbors they would build these huge towers and the taller or the higher the tower the more power that you had here's another view of Guinigi Tower I am now just north of the center of the old town of Lucca and to my left as I'm walking around this street there is the most remarkable building or neighborhood you have ever seen this at one time, this building that you see on my left, used to be a Roman arena. And sometime during the medieval times, people moved onto the grandstands of the arena. And thus, the Piazza of Amphitheater was born. So let's go, let's walk around and we're gonna go inside and view this absolutely magnificent and very unique structure. You can see here the curved shape of the wall of the amphitheater I'm outside. You can also see a lot of evidence of the existence of the amphitheater. This is one of the four entrances or gates. You can see the beautiful marble that once used to decorate the entrance see parts of the outside wall sticking out right there here's the outside wall as well here you can see the curvature you can also see the marble on this side of the entrance as well so let's go let's cross the arena now it was or is right above me and now we're crossing into the main part of the arena this is where the performances were held at and if you look around you will see the oval shape of this magnificent square we're getting ready for a show here so let's walk around Let's enjoy the views. 
if you go closer to this side of the arena you can see that the houses have been built on what used to be the stands and you can also see the actual shape of the arena so sometime in the medieval times this arena was in ruins and people started moving in and building their homes on the existing or whatever was left from the seats and eventually this whole neighborhood was created here this whole square which is now full of restaurants and coffee shops you can see some of them here that's another entrance right there there are four entrances to the arena all together and I find this place here to be one of the most beautiful in Lucca if not one of the most beautiful in all of Italy it is the architecture it is the history and it is the way it has been preserved and uh, here's another view of the arena from this angle here on a very very windy day by the way here in Lucca and here you can definitely from here you can see the curvature of the front of the houses how beautiful indeed isn't it Just north of the amphitheater that you just saw, we find the 11th century church of San Frediano. The front of the church was modified in the 13th century to include a magnificent Byzantine mosaic. You can see it up there and it is absolutely huge. It measures 10 meters by 10 meters in size and it is very rare in a medieval Italian town we find Byzantine mosaics. Now when this mosaic was created Constantinople was still the capital of the Byzantine Empire so the people here must have hired Byzantine artists in order to create this absolutely magnificent mosaic that you see here. And uh, here is a view of the beautiful bell tower of San Ferdiano, one of the tallest towers in the old town of Lucca and it looks absolutely beautiful with the blue skies behind it. Now imagine some of these buildings have existed since the 11th or since the 12th century so they've been around for eight or nine hundred years. So when you walk around, look at here, try to think how life has changed over the centuries and how many people have lived in these neighborhoods. Also try to disregard the occasional graffiti that unfortunately appears in a lot of the Italian towns and cities. Just enjoy the scenery and lift your head up and look at the architecture of the buildings above you. <laughs> and uh, here is the 11th century cathedral or Duomo of Lucca dedicated to San Martino. There was another church here before this one and when this one was built it was modified to accommodate the bell tower of the previous church and they also added an extra layer of marble on top of it as you can see there there are three layers of columns that you see there each layer contains columns of a different style. Now there, are, now there are three very negative aspects 
of visiting churches in Italy or in Europe and for which you have to pay for. First of all, the churches have turned into a business and a profit-making enterprise and you have to pay for this church three euros just to go inside and get a glimpse of the magnificent cathedral. The second very negative aspect of having to pay is that you're going to have to spend a small fortune just going into each of the cathedrals and the basilicas when you visit Italy. And the third and the scariest aspect is that there are churches that don't charge, not as spectacular as this one, but the churches that don't charge get absolutely mobbed with tour groups and individual tourists. But in any case, these are my thoughts. Here's another view of the Duomo here in Lucca. Let's continue our tour of this magnificent and very historic town here in Italy. And of course, Lucca's most famous son has always been Giacomo Puccini, the famous composer of Madame Butterfly, born here in Lucca in 1858, and he died in Lucca in 1924. The building that you see behind him, right there, the red brick building, was where his flat was located at, and that's where he wrote Madame Butterfly at, and other famous works of his. Well, the statue of uh, Puccini is right behind me. This is the entrance to the building of his flat. And that's his flat on the second floor. That's where he lived. Now, this whole place has been converted into a museum. And it's going to cost you seven euros to go inside. And view where Puccini wrote Madame Butterfly. Let's continue our tour. And uh, there are so many beautiful churches all around. This beautiful front that you see here probably was created around the 13th or at the latest on the 14th century. Very typical Pisan style that you see here. I cannot also help but thinking that some of the elements here have been borrowed from the Byzantines. Look at the tops of the columns here. But anyway, take your time when you walk around to admire these churches. See how beautiful they are. And this is the very unique style of Pisa, Tuscany, and Lucca. The layers of dark marble with layers of cream white marble in between. Wow, what do you think? Did you like what you saw? I hope that you did. This is such a magnificent, such a historic town here in Tuscany in Italy. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. This is Vic, all the way from Lucca in Italy. Bye-bye.